हेलो एवरी वन डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम्स फाउंड ऑन दिस अर्थ एंड हियर इन दिस पिक्चर यू आर एबल टू सी टू डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड आई एम श्योर दैट यू ऑल आर एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई दोज टू ऑर्गेनिजम्स वन इज वन यूनिसेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिजम दैट इज अमीबा एंड द सेकेंड वन इज वन मल्टी सेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिजम that is human being but can you say that what is the difference between this unicellular and multicellular organisms with respect to their functions let us find out in unicellular organism a single cell performs all the activities like nutrition respiration transportation and excretion but in multicellular organisms specialized cells perform specific functions and those specialized cells combine together to form tissues tissues again combine together to form organ and organ again together to form organ system and at last organism so let us find out what is a tissue look here a tissue is nothing but a group of cells that are similar in structure and work together to achieve a particular function and you know plants are made up of tissues animals are also made up of tissues but for are the plants and animals made up of similar kind of tissues a plant is stationary it cannot move it is fixed but one animal moves from one place to another in search of food in search of partner so definitely the tissues of the plants and animals vary from each other let us see how usually plants have supportive and dead tissues i already said that plants are fixed they cannot move that's why they need more support that's why a plant has usually 80% of dead tissues but animals move from one place to another and they are having most of the tissues are living but some tissues are dead now for example in our body only the nail tissue is dead only the hair tissue is dead okay so this is the first difference between plant tissue and animal tissue now let us see the second difference in plant the growth is unlimited now for example a plant grows till its breadth what happens a branch is cut again it grows but an animal growth happens up to a certain age after that there are no growth at all so we say growth is limited in animals but growth is unlimited in plants and here in this lesson we are going to discuss about plant tissue only so dear students before learning about the plant tissue i would like to suggest you to conduct an activity at your home only and remember whatever materials are required for this activity are easily available at home there is no need to go to market or anywhere else in this pandemic situation and what i have done i have taken all those materials and i have conducted the activity at home and i have taken the photos to share with you all so let us start what you are going to do we will discuss step by step okay so step 1 take two glass jars and fill them with water label them also jar 1 and jar 2 step 2 take two onions and place one on each jar look at the picture as it is shown in the same way you are going to put now let us go for step 3 you know once the onion bulbs are put in the jar definitely the roots will come out from those onions after few days so observe the roots of the onion in both the jar for few days and in step 4 what you are going to do you have to maintain a record 
on the day one you need to measure the length of the onion root in day two day three day four like that now in step five do one thing cut the root tip of the onion root of jar two only not jar one on only the tip of the onion root should be cut not the all the roots remember only the tip of the onion roots should be cut not whole root and again you place them in the respective jars and observe the growth of the roots in both jars and measure the length look here picture like in the same way you have to do now listen this is my experiment or my observation what i found that in jar 1 there was no change in jar 1 before there was growth and after also few days also there was growth the growth continued but in jar 2 after cutting the root tip of the onion there was no growth at all it remained as it is this is the result now look in the result in day 1 the length of the root of the onion bulb of both the jars remain same 3 cm 3 cm in day 2 again 3.5 cm 3.5 cm again in day 3 4 cm and 4 cm but what we did we removed the tip of the onion bulb on day 4 and only of jar 2 not of jar 1 then what was the result or observation in day 4 and 5 it was seen that the root tip all the roots continued to grow in jar 1 but not in jar 2 why why after removing the tip of the roots of the onion there was no growth at all what is the reason behind it means there must be something in the tip which helped them to grow and it was removed so what was that let us find out so that is a special kind of tissue called as meristematic tissue meristematic tissue was located at the tip of the onion how can you define it a tissue having ability to divide and redivide continuously is called as meristematic tissue and if the meristematic tissue is seen under the microscope you will be see this type of picture yeah now let us see the characteristics meristematic tissues have dense cytoplasm what is the meaning of dense dense means it is rich in food it is not dilute there is much more amount of food in the meristematic tissue cytoplasm and that food is utilized for division and redivision they are having thin cell wall the cell wall is made up of only cellulose and the nucleus is prominent here in the picture you can see the nucleus is prominent okay meristematic tissue lack vacuole all of you remember that in chapter cell it was taught that vacuole stores food in the mature plant tissue but here there is no need to store the food the tissues always in a mode of continuous division and redivision that's why there is no need to store the food so vacuole they don't have understood so let us see that where are the meristematic tissues found in the plant the meristematic tissues are of three types you can see from the picture one is apical meristem second one is intercalary meristem and the third one is lateral meristem let us find out what are their functions let us see with the help of the twig now see this apical meristematic tissue in the apical meristematic tissue as the name suggest it is located at the tip at the apex or at the tip of the shoot 
this apical meristematic tissue helps in linear growth means it helps in vertical growth or linear growth of the plant now second type of meristematic tissue is intercalary meristematic tissue intercalary meristematic tissues are located at the base of the leaf or just above the node it is located just above the node or at the base of the leaf that means it helps in the formation of branches and twigs the third type of meristematic tissue is lateral meristematic tissue lateral meristematic tissue is located at the lateral surfaces of the plant so this tissue helps in the growth of the stem it increases the growth of the stems or you can say it increases the diameter of the stem gradually the stem a thin stem gradually gradually becomes thick it's because of the lateral meristematic tissue okay now next till now we have learned that plant tissue is divided into two types one is meristematic and the second type is permanent we are going to discuss about permanent tissues all of you know that leaves help in photosynthesis it traps solar energy mainly the chlorophyll present in the leaf traps solar energy and helps in photosynthesis but do you know which type of tissue contain chlorophyll it is a type of permanent tissue now second sometimes we see that when heavy wind blows or any time else also on any other time we can see a plant it bends it does not break why so which tissue helps the plants to bend instead of breaking it is also a type of permanent tissues and all of you know that the roots absorb water and mineral but all the parts of the plant they need water and mineral to sustain the leaves prepare the food but all the parts of the plant they need the food so which tissue helps in the transportation of food and water in the plant so it's nothing but the permanent tissues and those permanent tissues are of two types and what happens those tissue have lost the ability to grow and to divide they have developed from the meristematic tissue only meristematic tissues have the ability to divide and redivide but permanent tissues have lost the ability to divide and redivide that is the major difference between meristematic and permanent so meristematic tissue gradually 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 differentiate to form the permanent tissues so let us find out what are the different types of permanent tissues so one type of permanent tissue is simple and another type is called as complex what is the meaning of simple and complex now let us find out you know that the cells combine together to form the tissue but if the cells are of similar type it's called as simple tissue and if the cells are of different types but origin is same Re remember the origin is same if the cells are of different types then it's called as complex permanent tissue simple permanent tissue is divided into parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma but complex permanent tissues are divided into xylem and phloem so when a parenchyma tissue is seen under the microscope we can see the following parts cytoplasm nucleus cell wall and vacuole so let us find out what are the characteristics of parenchyma tissue here the cell wall is thin and it is made up of cellulose second the cells are living it is clearly seen that the cells have cytoplasm the cells have nuclei 
So, if, it, if the cell is having cytoplasm and nucleus, so definitely the cell is living. Third one, they may or may not have intracellular spaces. It varies from plant to plant. You can see in the picture, a per type of permanent or parenchyma tissue is shown having intracellular spaces. And in the first picture, there is no intracellular spaces at all. So, though they may or may not have intercellular spaces. Let us find out what are the different types of parenchyma on the basis of location and on the basis of function. Now look at the picture. You can see that the leaves they help in photosynthesis all of you know. So what are the tissues which are found in the leaf which help in photosynthesis. In order to know that we have to know the internal structure of a leaf. Now look here, a leaf is having two surfaces. One surface is called as upper surface which is usually dark green in color or we can say it is called as ventral surface and the lower surface which is usually pale green in color is called as dorsal surface. Why the ventral surface is dark green in color? Because to absorb the solar energy and if the thin slice of the leaf is taken and it is observed under the microscope, you can see different types of cells under the microscope. Now, look here, only concentrate on palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll. The palisade mesophyll, it looks green here as because they contain chloroplast and spongy mesophyll also they contain chloroplast. But what is the difference? Palisade mesophyll are tightly packed and long, spongy mesophyll are loosely packed and those are circular in nature, but both are parenchyma tissue. And you can say also instead of palisade mesophyll, we can also say palisade parenchyma and spongy parenchyma. So here what you have learnt till now that parenchyma having chlorophyll is called chlorenchyma and they perform photosynthesis. So, this chlorenchyma tissue is located in the green leaves and in young stem. Okay. So, students sometimes I think and also my students think that why do some aquatic plants float? Not all the aquatic plants, only some. Why do they float? Let us find out why. Yes, so definitely they have a special type of parenchyma tissue called as erenchyma. As the name suggests or the name says that these type of tissues have lots of air cavities. You can see the picture of the stem of lotus is taken which is commonly called as column kakri and that stem is having lots of air spaces and if it is seen under the microscope, you can see the air cavities very clearly. So, what are the characteristics of the arenchyma tissue? So, the tissues having large air cavities are called as arenchyma. It is a type of parenchyma tissue and it provides buoyancy means it helps the plants to float in water and third, it is mainly located in aquatic plants. Let us come to the third type of parenchyma tissue and it is called as storage parenchyma. Again, as the name suggests, it stores the food. So, what it stores? In the legumes, it stores the protein. In beetroot, it stores the food. In the grains, for example, in rice, in wheat, in maize, it stores starch. Not only food, it also stores water and in xerophytic and succulents. So, let us find out what are the characteristics of this torres parenchyma tissue. So, these cells are chlorophyll free, they do not have any chlorophyll. Point number two, they stores water in succulent plants and in xerophytic plants. They also store starch grains, protein and lipid in different food particles. Sometimes 
a question comes to our mind that why does a plant bend when strong wind blows why the plants do not break they bend only again they come back to their own position so definitely it's because of a tissue called as collenchyma the collenchyma tissue is mainly found in the herbaceous plant and in the margin in the margin of the leaves and the petiole of the leaves margin and petiole of the leaves if you see the collenchyma tissue under the microscope we can see cell wall protoplasm vacuole but what is the difference between parenchyma and collenchyma let us find out how they are different from each other so look here the cells are thickened at the angle or corner only and it is because of the deposition of pectin means the cell wall is thin but only thickened at the corner you can see it is shown here in the picture it is only thick at the corner due to the deposition of one chemical compound which is called as pectin and the second point is cells are living they are having protoplasm okay. and they are having vacuoles nucleus so definitely the cells are living and some contain chlorophyll not all and if they contain chlorophyll definitely they help in photosynthesis but the major function of the collenchyma is to provide elasticity and flexibility also it provides mechanical strength but remember the major function is to provide elasticity and flexibility that's why a plant it bends it does not break when strong wind blows that is the main cause okay so dear students how many of you find it difficult to remove the husk of the coconut i think everybody so why why is it difficult to remove the husk of the coconut let us find out okay i think all of our fond of fruits but have you noticed why the pear is usually crunchy and granular while the mango is not the ripe papaya is not why yes so it is because of different type of tissues a tissue which is called as sclerenchyma it's a type of permanent tissue so sclerenchyma tissue which is found in the husk of the coconut is fiber and the sclerenchyma tissue which is found in the pear pulp is called as scleroid so sclerenchyma tissue is of two types one is fiber and another one is scleroid these tissues are thick and uniformly you can see the picture they are thick and uniformly thick and because of the deposition of one chemical compound called as lignin the cells are dead nothing no cytoplasm no organelles nothing that's why the cells are dead so as they are dead definitely they provide mechanical support but except coconut husk is there any other tissues where sclerenchyma fiber is found or in, is there any other parts of the plant where the sclerenchyma fiber is found let us find out yes it's jute plant it is a cotton plant and it is the hemp plant and commonly we say those are the fiber yielding plants again except pear pulp is there any other fruits where the sclerets are found let us find out we have already learnt in the pulp of the pear yes they are also found in the coats of different nuts in the core of the apple and in the pulp of the guava usually raw guava yes so here is a question for you can you tell that which tissue is found in the tea leaves either it is scleroid or it is fiber yes so it's scleroid not the fiber it is scleroid okay all of you know 
that plant or the roots of the plant absorb water then it is transported to different parts of the plant with the help of a special kind of tissue also the leaves prepare food it is transported to all the parts of the plant through a special kind of tissue and those tissues are called as complex tissues why complex they are made up of different types of cells you can see here from the table that the xylem is made up of four different type of cells or, or otherwise it is called as four different types of elements one element is tracheid vessel xylem fiber xylem parenchyma like that phloem is also made up of four different types of cells or different types of elements one is sieve tube then companion cell then phloem parenchyma and the last one is phloem fiber okay when the xylem is seen under the microscope definitely under the electron microscope it is seen in this way almost all the cells are dead so let us find out which are dead and which are living in the xylem tissue okay so the first cell or you can say the first element of the xylem is tracheid it is a type of cell remember it is a type of cell look at the picture you can see the characteristics you can know the characteristics by looking at the picture the cell is tubular in structure but both the ends are pointed second the cell wall is thick due to the deposition of lignin third the cell is dead there is no protoplasm no nucleus no organelles that's why we can say the cell is dead so what it does it transports water and mineral vertically means from root to above or to other parts of the plant the second element or you can say the second cell it's called as vessel look at the picture yes it is tubular in structure but much wider than tracheid tracheid is also tubular vessel is also tubular but the vessel is much wider here also same thing the thick cell wall due to the deposition of lignin the cell is dead there is no cytoplasm no organelles and this one also transports water and mineral vertically but maximum amount of water is transported through vessel instead of tracheid you can see from the picture itself you will be able to know that vessels are much wider and tracheids are having less wide so vessels transport more water than the tracheid okay. then the third type of xylem tissue is xylem parenchyma actually there are some parenchymatous tissue which are associated with the xylem those are called as xylem parenchyma and those cells are living it is clearly visible clearly seen from the picture that they are having nucleus and cytoplasm so definitely the cells are living what they do they only store food not only store food they also helps in sideway conduction of water remember tracheids and vessel they transport water vertically but xylem parenchyma transport water in side way okay and the last cell of the xylem is fiber some sclerenchymatous tissues are associated with the xylem those are called as xylem fiber completely all the cells are dead the cell wall is lignified okay what they do they provide mechanical support they do not help in transport of water they only provide mechanical support so xylem is a type of complex permanent tissue and look at the picture a leaf leaf prepares the food but 
that food is transported to each and every part it it is transported to the branches and also to the roots so which tissue helps is a tissue known as phloem okay the phloem tissue is seen in this way under the microscope so what are as already said phloem is made up of four different types of cells or four different types of elements so those elements are companion cell one sieve tube cell two phloem fiber three and phloem parenchyma four okay so let us see sieve tube and companion cell so look at the picture sieve tube are tubular cells with perforated walls means they are having holes okay. so it's called as perforated walls what the sieve tube do they transport food or they transport nutrients from leaf to other parts of the plant companion cells are the living tissues and are associated with the sieve tube remember sieve tube is the tissue in the plant which is living but without any nucleus the nucleus of the companion cell controls the activity of sieve tube so always companion cell and sieve tube they are always found close with each other and both of them transport food the next type of phloem tissue is phloem parenchyma it stores food it is a cell phloem parenchyma is a cell of the phloem tissue it stores food and the last one is phloem fiber which is dead and provides mechanical support okay. so there are tissues tissues combine together to form the tissue system in plants also tissues combine together to form the tissue system so these tissue systems are of three types one is epidermal tissue system second one is ground tissue system and the third one is vascular tissue system we will discuss about epidermal tissue system means what are the parts which are coming under epidermal tissue system and what they do let us find out yes so look at the picture in epidermal tissue system you will find out the first part is epidermis the epidermis is the outermost layer of the cells or you can say it may be single it may be multi layered in the picture you can see it may be single in the picture it is shown only one layer but in some plants it is multi layered or you can say it is many layered okay from the picture you can see that there are no intercellular spaces they are tightly arranged they are compactly arranged what they do they provide protection means they provide protection from the external environment from the algae from the fungi from the microbes and provide protection to the underlying tissues yes the second part of the epidermal tissue system is cuticle it is not found in each and every parts of the plant it's only found in the xerophytic plants and it is a waxy layer that waxy layer is made up of a chemical it's called as cutin that's why the structure is called as cuticle so as it is waxy it prevents water loss desert plants need to store water so that's why the cuticle is mostly found in the xerophytic plants or you can say in the succulents okay. the third part of the epidermal tissue system is stomata usually stomata are found on the dorsal surface of the leaf in the dicotyledon plant they are found on the dorsal surface of the leaf you can see from the picture stomata is made up of two kidney shaped cells called as gut cells gut cells are living they are having chloroplast they are having nucleus so gut cells are living 
सो दो टोमाटा दे हेल्प इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेस एंड ऑल्सो दे हेल्प दे हेल्प इन ट्रांसपीरेशन मीन्स वाटर इज लॉस्ट फ्रॉम द स्टोमाटा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ भेपर यस एंड द सेकेंड टाइप इज वास्कुलर टिश्यू सिस्टम यू हैव ऑलरेडी रेड अबाउट वास्कुलर टिश्यू सिस्टम इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ जाइलम एंड फ्लोएम ऑलरेडी यू हैव गन थ्रू दैट यस सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स हैव यू मार्क when a plant is very small or young the stem is usually green you see the picture the mango plant picture you see the stem is green in color gradually gradually the stem is converted to brown color again when it becomes very old the stem the outer stem it cracks you can see the cracks on the third diagram that that cracks and the thick cells are combinedly called as bark so do you know how the bark is formed yes remember the outermost layer of the stem is called as epidermis below the epidermis there are group of parenchyma tissues but in between the parenchyma tissue there are some specific cells called as corcambium or called as meristematic cells or you can say there are some patches of meristematic tissue in between the parenchymatous tissue and you know that meristematic tissue continuously divide and redivide so here also same thing happens the corcambium or the meristematic tissue continuously divide and redivide and they add cells towards outer side as well as towards inner side as a result the outer side cells what they do they gradually gradually deposit one chemical substance it's called as suberin and that suberin is totally impervious to water and nutrients and upper cells gradually they become dead so combinedly those mass of cells are called as bark or cork so cork and bark how they help the plants let us see that how does the bark or cork help the plant yes here is your answer that cork and bark tissues are compactly arranged those tissues are definitely dead and they those tissue they deposit suberin in their cell wall so because they are dead they protect the underlying tissues from the external environment mainly from the microorganisms so students today you got to know about different types of plant tissue like plant tissue is of two types meristematic and permanent meristematic is again divided into three types on the basis of position that is apical intercalary and lateral permanent tissues are again divided into two types on the basis of their structure whether they are similar or they are dissimilar one is simple and the second one is complex the simple permanent tissues are again divided into three types parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma but the complex permanent tissues are divided into xylem and phloem xylem is again divided into four types of cells xylem is a tissue so it is divided into cells one is tracheid second is vessel third one is xylem fiber and the fourth one is xylem parenchyma like this phloem complex permanent tissue is divided into four different types of cells one is sieve element second is companion cell third one is fiber and the fourth one is phloem parenchyma so let us devise look at the picture everyone and carefully you see and identify the permanent tissue in the first picture the transverse section is given and in the second picture the longitudinal section is given carefully see 
and find out. So yes, the answer is cholenchyma. It is the cholenchyma tissue. The cell wall is thin but only thickened at the corner, at the angle and due to deposition of pectin. Cells are living. That is why it is cholenchyma. The peculiar characteristics of cholenchyma is that the thickening is at the angle only. Okay. Let us come to the second question. So, where are these tissues found? In the plant. Yes. So, those are found in the petiole of the leaf and in the margin of the leaf. In most of the plants found, but mostly in the petiole of the leaf and margin of the leaves. Let us come to the third question. How does it help the plant when strong wind blows? Okay. You know that this tissue provides elasticity. So, when strong wind blows, the plants they bend, they do not break because of the flexibility and elasticity. I think it is clear to everybody. So, thank you everyone.